It's the McKissle Deck News Hour. <laughs> It's the McKessel Deck News Hour. <laughs> shalom, family. Shalom, shalom. Come on in. Shalom, shalom. Shalom there, Jason Lee. One nation, one power. Shalom, shalom. Come on in, come on in, come on in. I see you there, Sister Anaya. Shalom, shalom, family. Welcome to the McKessel Jack News Hour. It's your sister, Chaya the Elect. That's right, I'm here. How's everybody doing today? How's everybody doing? Let me see who I get in my live chat. Thank y'all for joining me. It's raining here in Hawaii. Woo, we're going to talk about the weather, y'all, today. Woo, wait, it's some, it's some things going on there. Yes, shalom there, pure. Look, pursue righteousness. I love that name. Shalom there, my sister. Big Bear. What's up, Big Bear? <laughs> the genus are roaring. Big Bear, what's going on over there in Cali? I heard a whole lot of rain, blood, and I saw some crazy stuff over there in California. We got to talk about it today. Hallelujah. There, what's going on, Sister Ruette? Shalom, shalom, my beautiful sister. Yes. Welcome to the McKessel Tech News Hour, all those that are joining. Come on in to my live chat. Those around the world that are watching, I saw you there, Sister Anaya over there in the UK. What's up to you and Super Audi? One, two, three, four, my sisters. I love you. I hope everybody is well on this, what, Monday, April 1st? is April Fool's, y'all. Uh-oh. Y'all remember when we were in school, when April Fool's Day used to come around when we was young folks? Man, we used to love playing all them little, them little prank jokes on people and stuff. Yeah, it was I the only one, Brother Daryl. <laughs> Brother Daryl said it's also raining in Virginia. Brother Daryl, it's all kind of weather going on. We got to talk about it, y'all. That's going to be the first thing we talk about in the McKessel Deck News. For those of you that are joining, welcome to the McKessel Deck News Live. That's right. I'm your host, Sister Chaya the Elect. Chaya the Elect. <laughs> Where's Sister Julia when I need her? Chayan, Chayan Effect. That's right. Representing for the McKessel Deck News. And always, real love, real respect. That's the hashtag. Real love, real respect. That's right. R-L-R-R. -R. And much love, much respect to all of those. Absolutely. How was the weekend, everybody? You know, it was an interesting weekend. People had out them, they was handing out Easter baskets to the kids and chocolate bunnies and Easter egg hunts and all that. I heard at the White House, they had to delay their little Easter egg hunt because the weather was crazy. It was like, nah, uh mm-mm, y'all not finna do this. <laughs> Shalom there, Brother Yosef. Dialect, my husband here in the Hawaiian Islands with me, always holding me down and and being my number one supporter. So how's everybody? If you're joining me from Instagram, 
and Twitter and Facebook. That's right. What's up, Facebook people? Yeah, let me let me clear my teeth on that shot. Let me make sure I don't got no lipstick on my teeth. I've seen a lot of activity in on my social media platform this weekend, and I thank you for all those who have added me as your friend. I've added you as my friend over there at Facebook, as well as TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, even though they be hating on me over there on, on Elon Musk's little platform X. They can hate on the McKessel Deck News. They know what it is. They recognize the name. But how's everyone? I want to know how you all are doing on this glorious Monday. All praises to the Most High. He's the reason why I do this. He's worthy to be praised, right? He's worthy to be praised no matter what the day is, no matter what the month is, no matter what the season is, no matter what the circumstances are. He's worthy to be praised. And this channel is the channel that represents for the Messiah, the true Messiah, who is establishing his true kingdom of righteousness upon this earth. That's right. He's already in the midst of us. And many don't even know it. He's right here in the midst. That's right. So this channel is to unify all. That's what this channel is about. Amen in the chat. It's all about unifying people because we ain't going to make it through what's coming, y'all, unless we um, get together. I'm sorry to say, but it's going to take a lot of unity because we do have some tough times ahead and some 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 trials and tribulations that are before us, but we can endure to the end because we've already been given that hope and that promise that we can. So I'm here to tell you that the Most High sends a, a message to all of us that you can do it. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Amen. Amen. Excuse me as I get a little water here. I see you there, Sister Anaya. So y'all, let me tell you, it's a little rainy over here. You know, this is where the atmospheric river is coming. If you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. I would like for you to do that. That's all I'm asking. And click the like button. Click the like button as you come into the live chat. If you're watching this later, I just want to say that I love you. Sister Chaya is all about the love, baby. Unconditional love for all my brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter what your nationality is, what your religion is, what your politics are. I don't care about what books you're studying. None of that. Let's all come together. That's what we got in the live chat. We got our family from One Nation, One Power, other churches, denominations. You know, that's who watches this channel, everybody. You know, it's time for us to come together. Let's put aside all this bigotry and the biases and racism. Let's do away with all that. We need love right now. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Speaking of that, you all, I tell you from time to time, I do ride share here in Hawaii. And a lot of people know me as the Uber and Lyft Aloha Mobile. Yesterday, I had such a fulfilling day. I met a young couple from um, Israel. Yes. And what an enlightening conversation that I had with those two, Rohan and Noga. Yes, just in case they might, you never know, they might get on my channel. But Rohan and Noga from Israel, and um, we had a really good conversation. They were saying about, you know, how just to live in oppression and war daily and how it's become normalized, you know, just bombs going off over your head left and right. You never know when. You just live like on eggshells. And that's just the 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 climate of what you live in and how the children, even how they've become accustomed to just living in chaos and war. And Noga, she told me she was a school teacher of, um, and she teaches kindergarten. And I was like, man, what a great job to be able to influence the young minds. And she was just saying how the children, they have just become normalized to war and they were talking about just how of a blessing it is for, they were speaking of me um, living here in Hawaii and how peaceful it is. And I was like, yes, I said, people that have peace and tranquility, we take it for granted. Yes, we take it for granted, family, especially those that are in the mainland USA, all these luxuries, all this just grace that the father has given us mercy. Because when you talk to people that are in those worn, torn countries, 
with bombs going over their heads daily. When you talk to them, they're like, man, you're so blessed. You're so lucky. We are. And we need to um, be more grateful as to um, that mercy and grace that we've been given. Amen. That's all I want to say. So from Sister Chaya, I was like, I love I love my brothers and sisters all over the world. And um, I know what you're going through. It, I told them, you know, it's the it's the wicked men at the top. They just it's a it's a satanic agenda. Against the righteous, that's what's going on. Because at the end of the day, we all want love. We all want peace and just be able to take care of our families and just live in harmony together. That's really what we all want. Amen. Amen. So that's why I say this channel is not about your politics. I don't care about none of that. The Most High doesn't care about all of that. Your traditions, your beliefs. No, no. We're all the children of the creator. That's right. That's what he says in his word. All of us. There's none above. He is no respecter of persons. He doesn't play favoritism when it comes to his children. As a matter of fact, Christ says, he that is for us is not against us. Hey, that's what he says. So we're all of us are to come together. Amen. What we got in the live chat? I got a precept. Uh oh, hold on. Who got a precept? Philippians 4 and 7, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you for that. Pursue righteousness. Amen. That's what it's about, y'all. We're going to be talking it. We got to talk it and live it. You got to live it out. We got a lot of headlines to cover, y'all, today because it's Monday and it's April 1st. April Fool's Day the beginning of a new month, but it's been a lot developing just over the last few days, particularly with this weather. And so I'm going to be rolling and getting into what is going on with this weather. Oh, I love that. Hold on. One more precept. I like that right there. But you got Romans 8 and 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Did you hear that family from all around the world? All my brothers and sisters, if God be for us, who can be against us? So that's what we got to remember right now in this time of difficulty and everything that we're going through all around the world. Because all of us are going through, believe me, as I talked to my brothers and sisters from Israel yesterday, I just realized we are all one. We all the same. We all just going through trials and tribulations and we, we all desire the same. So let's just let's extend an olive branch to all of our brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. As we get into the headlines, what else do I got for y'all? What else does Sister Chaya got? I did want to say something to the fact that it's important for us to be vigilant right now and to be paying attention to all these things going on, because as y'all notice, it's a lot developing really fast. And I do these McKesseldeck News headlines because a lot of people, you know, you don't really care for the mainstream news. You know, they be selling us wolf tickets. They give us half of the story and they're not going to do what McKesseldeck News does. And that's connect the prophecies and the things that are written in the scriptures to the news headlines, because that's what we do here on McKesseldeck News. going to bring up and share with you a little scripture of what Christ told us to do in this hour, because he warned us. And, and, and this is what I'm doing. He says, cry aloud and spare not. That's right. That's why I'm lifting up my voice. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and show the people their discretion, their trans discretion, <laughs> transgression and the house of Jacob, their sins. Amen. We got to speak right now. We got to let the world know what's going on, family, because it's a lot going on right now. Watch. OK, it's important to watch right now. Be vigilant. Pay attention to everything that's going on. Get your house in order. OK, make whatever preparations, whether they be spiritual, mental, emotional, financially, mentally. Get them in order. He says to watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and stand before the son of God. Amen. That's what it's about. Watch again. Watch for, you know, neither the day or the hour. That's right. Tomorrow's not promised to any of us. Today is the day to be vigilant, paying attention to all things, keeping your mind on 
the word of God, cleansing these garments, coming from sin, repenting, getting your life right, turning from the dark, wicked things that you're doing behind closed doors. Yeah, them secret sins. I'm talking to talking to some people, them secret sins. It's time to come out of those behind closed doors. It's time to get right with the most high. Amen. Amen. Let's get into the headlines, people. What you guys is to tell you, we're going to start with the weather. We're going to start with the weather, people. Yes, because so much is going on. News hour. What? What it's you say? It's the McCaslow Deck News Hour. <laughs> it's the McCaslow Deck News Hour. That was the remix, y'all. <laughs> Brother Yosef over there cracking up. He was like, stop it. Stop it. He's out in the field, but I know he's laughing. I know he's laughing. Amen. So I got a lot of headlines for y'all. Let's get into it. Let's start with the weather. Brother Durrell already said over there, Virginia is raining. It's, it's right now, West Coast to the East Coast. Everybody is in in the in the in the in the what they call it in the path of the storm because it's a lot going on nationwide. So let's uh, we gonna hear from Fox first. Is that you, Fox? If it ain't Fox, it look like it's Good Morning America. But let's get some of these headlines regarding the weather because there are some major things developing in the weather. I need y'all to be vigilant. Make sure you're paying attention just in case it's your state that might be in the eye of the storm but i did hear that we got some tornado warnings and some things coming so let's get that now this year april showers came early for millions of americans with torrential rains dusty winds and large hail battering parts of the country in the midwest where the storm is headed next Hailed the size of golf balls hitting cars. Oh my God, this is so bad. The system bringing torrential downpours to California before working its way east. In Santa Barbara County, some drivers left stranded after severe flooding shut down this stretch of highway. Twyla Douglas was driving from LA when traffic suddenly came to a complete standstill. We heard this like raging water sound and we're like, oh, this is not good at all. Meanwhile, parts of the scenic Highway 1 near Big Sur breaking off into the ocean, stranding hundreds of people and sending two to the hospital, according to officials. While in the sky near San Jose, lightning near an airplane. And further north in Truckee, tragedy striking during a storm that brought 14 inches of snow this weekend. According to airport officials, two people were killed in a deadly plane crash while attempting to land at the airport. No cause has man California. Did y'all see that highway? I see you there, sister Judy, in the live chat. You and Big Bear, y'all over there in California. You've got a number of brothers and sisters in that area. Man, highways collapsing and falling apart on top of the bridges that's collapsing and falling apart. Mm, some intentionally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There I go to threat. Mm-hmm. But yes, yeah, a lot going on. They getting snow. Rain. You see those highways? Man, what we got in the live chat? Those highways. Woo, it's rough over there in California. Rough over there in California. But California ain't the only one. Even those in Arizona, y'all need to be paying attention because it's so much with this storm front that's moving across the country. So we're going to really spend some time and cover the complete uh, weather conditions right now across the country. St. Louis, Little Rock, Arkansas, Dallas. You're going to be with some of the first to see uh in this string of severe weather over the next couple of days uh, and into Texas as well. And you'll notice, Michael, it's North Texas across the Red River Valley and can't emphasize enough. We have a lot of folks that are going to be under that very likely threat, which goes through Oklahoma in towards Missouri, all the way towards Illinois. It's interesting, too, because when you look at the dynamics of the system and you look at the areas that are most at risk, we're thinking that parts of eastern Oklahoma, that's going to be where that large hail, the baseball sized hail could fall from the sky. The closer you are to the actual area of low pressure, that big capital L with that spinning and that counterclockwise rotation, that. They just covered like 10 states right there. Missouri, Illinois, Arkansas, Indiana, Texas, Oklahoma. That's who is in the eye of this major storm right now. And a few other states that I didn't mention. Let's get some more about tornadoes and destructive hail. Because um, this is over the next few days. 
uh, bring in on the conversation operations branch chief with NOAA's Storm Prediction Center, Bill Bunting. Bill, thanks for joining us. There's a lot of real estate in the outlook that we have today. I mean, from my perspective, it seems as if it's a challenging forecast ahead, going to be a bit of a mess, but let's try to start simple. Why is the outlook so big with the system? Well, good to be with you both. Um, this is early spring. Storm systems are expansive. They move quickly. And so as a result of that, we have a broad area of the country potentially at risk for severe storms. And so that area is going to develop over the southern plains and along the Ohio Valley, as you mentioned, along that warm front. And it's only going to move rapidly east with time. And in fact, as you noted, uh, tomorrow looks quite busy. We'll, we're looking at expanding those risk areas now. Some of that depends on he just said tomorrow we're going to be expanding the area. And I saw in the live chat, somebody mentioned about, mm, isn't that the whole path of the big solar eclipse that's coming um, next Monday? Interesting, right? We're going to talk about that, too. So I was just talking about California. Sister Judy, you and Brother um, brother Big Bear, y'all probably heard about this, but some people in the chat and some of those watching didn't hear about them. It was like 1,600 people got trapped over there on those roads over there in California. And we're on the northern half of this latest closure along Highway 1. This is just north of the Rocky Creek Bridge. That's what helps connect Carmel to Big Sur. Right next to us, you see what looks like a convoy, essentially a line of people waiting to see if they can get back into this direction here. That's been kind of what uh, Caltrans and CHP have kind of situated twice a day at 8 o'clock a.m. and 4 o'clock p.m. They allow cars to go through for an hour at a time. It's 8 a.m. will be the first window. They're letting the folks who are on the south side of the, of the closure here, those people who are essentially stuck, they'll let them. That's what I'm talking about, about being prepared, though, to you all, because, you know, we see that the weather is intensifying with all these storms all across the country. I mean, it's been like that for the last few years. Things have just been really increasing. And this is the week that they're talking about um, a lot of stuff with the solar eclipse, all these X flares, coronal mass injections, leaving the sun, even in your car. Try to have some things, you know, You sh everybody should have like an emergency bag in your car, blanket, water, you know, a light source, things like that. Just things we can have because you never know. It, a road might get closed, just like what happened to them people over there in California. 1,600 people was stuck. I don't know how long. They were on the um, on the road before they opened it back up. But with the weather that's going on and, and these disasters that's happening with the weather, you never know. So take some precautions. That's why I said we're supposed to be watching, be vigilant. This is the importance of the McKessel Deck News, just to keep us all on our P's and Q's. Amen. So something else I saw, too, about this weather, because this is pretty extreme, what's coming over the next few days. I want you all to check it out, and I want you to see the the weather radar and just this storm to me it just looks so wicked i just see like witchcraft and sorcery being worked because i i know for a fact because the scriptures say that mankind are manipulating the weather that's right if you're joining my channel for the first time evil men at the top they can circumvent the weather that means to manipulate the weather with their technology so i want you to check this out and think about what i just said about the weather being manipulated by HARP and CERN and other technology. Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide. And we are on April 1st, 2024. Welcome to another Surviving Day on the Planet. And welcome to a quick video update here as we have quite a situation developing across uh, Western United States through California and as well all through Central Mexico, Texas, and then all up through the Central United States. Extreme weather has been breaking out over the last 12 hours and will continue to do so over the next three days. And it will get more intense tomorrow as things warm up and this low pressure system moves northeastward towards Ontario. So situation, low pressure system off the coast of California and as well, low pressure system north of Colorado. So Colorado low slipping southward and so is that low along the California coastline. Putting this into motion, this is over the last 24 hours, saw quite a bit of rainfall through California State and as well through Phoenix, New Mexico, extreme weather here forecasted for tomorrow, especially through the Ohio, Ohio Valley, 
Iowa, Kansas, our regular extreme weather states. Spring is here and these systems are coming through. Y'all see how that's looking? Just when you look at the radar, you know, if you have eyes to see and ears to hear, when you look at just the radar system, there's just sorcery, you know, and then the movement of the radar and you wonder how they can predict the weather. Mm-hmm. I said it last week and I'm telling y'all again, for those that don't know, the word NASA, 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 N-A-S-A, it means to deceive. It means deception. Everything that they're doing is all about deceiving the world. Something else that uh, related into the weather, they're talking about the forecast as well with this solar eclipse. Because I've never seen just so much hype about a solar eclipse. Check this out, family. Wanted to share it with y'all. Uh, we're getting a better idea of what this might look like come April 8th, next Monday. It'll change leading up to the event, but a, a quick look at that path of totality. Let's start with that. I mean, we've got it all the way from San Antonio, Texas to Burlington, Vermont. And that path from border to border, you heard Nicole mention it, we're not going to see this again until 2045. There's also a total solar eclipse in 2044. It'll be actually fading in Montana, but the next total solar eclipse, you got to wait 21 years. How about the clouds? This is the new map. And, and folks, bottom line, it looks like an April day. Imagine if the eclipse were today. We have this system that's bringing clouds from Dallas clear up into Indianapolis. Let's hope that we're not dealing with a storm system similar to what we're dealing with today. This forecast is going to be updated four times a day as we get new and more data. So zoning in and narrowing in on a few of these areas, Texas has been of concern because we might have a return flow happening here off the Gulf of Mexico. Talking about that southeast, southwest wind, we could, we could see those clouds build in. If it was more of a westerly wind, it's dry. Do y'all see in the chat and those watching, do y'all see how the weather is being directed and manipulated to that region where the solar eclipse is going to pass by? Mm-hmm. Those that have eyes to see and ears to hear. And then those that may know of what CERN really is and HARP. And what's today? Monday. So that's next Monday. If that's the plan, you see how the weather is being circumvented to that whole little region in that section. Those that's in those states, be aware and be prepared. All those states that supposedly this sol solar eclipse is going to touch or, you know, overshadow for that four or five minutes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm be prayed up. Amen. Something else I saw. Let me see. Anything else we got there? Well, in the meanwhile, I'm going to talk about the bridge over there in Baltimore too. What you got over there in the live chat? Everybody's just like, yes, right. Be praying for our children. And this is a, this is a time to definitely be praying and be vigilant. I'm going to do some follow-up with the story we all know about. The whole world has heard about it by now. Mm -hmm. The big old Baltimore, that Baltimore bridge collapse. Let's get an update on what's going on over there on the East Coast. Tonight, the first view of a beam carried away by crane from the wreckage of the key bridge. Coast Guard video showing crews using cutting torches to slice through steel. Officials confirming the first salvage efforts were a success, including a 200 ton piece of the northern part of the bridge cut away and removed on Saturday. Still, it's just a small fraction of the work to be done. These are more the secondary pieces because we're hoping to open up secondary channels. And what's your understanding about now we're a week later, the probability of actually finding these four men who are missing and, and what it's going to take to do that? We owe it to these families to bring a sense of closure. And so as soon as it is safe for our divers to get back into the water, those divers are going back in the water. Even as the 24 7. Mm -hmm. We owe it to those families. Yeah, you do. And you owe us the truth, the public, on what's really going on over there. One of the things I saw about that bridge, and we all know, because we all really, really know what's really going on. They said 
Biden got on TV all cryptic looking like tales of the crypt. What's that? What's that show? Yeah, what's the show? Sister Judy, no, I know in the chat. Tales of the crypt, crypt, cryptics or whatever, tales of the creep. What's the show? That's what Biden was looking like last week with his little press conference. Anybody in the chat know what I'm talking about? Tales of the Crypt. Is that what the name of it was? That's how he was looking last week. He's like, yeah, we're going to repair the bridge. First of all, y'all the ones that tore it down. Look, look, y'all, look. Yeah, it's a movie. Look, yeah. Pursue Righteousness said, this is a doggone movie. Tales of the Hood. Is that what it is? This is Judy Tales of the Hood. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, he was over there. The Crypt Keeper. <laughs> all the above, right? Anyway, they said it's going to be 10 years before they can have the bridge completed, restored. Okay, so in the meanwhile, what does that mean? That means hardship for those that are living on um, that side of the country, particularly that have to get shipments. Is this is, is things not coming down? Could it be any clearer 10 years before we complete this bridge? And then I even heard of another bridge got hit, but it didn't come down. I think that was in Oklahoma. Do I get it on here? It was another bridge. It was another barge. A barge hit another bridge. It didn't take it down. It did a little minimum damage. I think that was in Oklahoma. That was over the last few days, too. Mm -hmm. They're trying. Y'all trying to hit up bridges or something? What's up? What's up? Let us know. Y'all trying to hit the bridges up? Hmm. I wanted to follow up on this, too, for those that might have missed it, because I got more information about this. Women getting randomly punched over there in NYC. Mm-hmm. Multiple women in New York City taking to social media claiming they've been randomly punched on the street. Yeah, the videos are surprising and they've sparked nationwide outrage. Fox Eyes' Michelle Ross takes a closer look at what's been happening. You guys, I was literally just walking and a man came up and punched me in the face. So I just got punched in the face walking home. Women are taking to TikTok sharing similar stories of them getting punched in the face in unprovoked attacks on the streets of New York City. Oh my God, it hurts so bad. I can't even talk. Influencer Hallie Kate developed a bump on her forehead after she says a man walking a dog punched her on Monday in Chelsea. For that attack, police charged 40-year-old Skabuki Stora with assault and harassment. Standing in front of a Trump flag, he claims he's a great-great-grandson of Marcus Garvey. With more than 90,000 followers on social media, he posts videos of women and his interactions with police. Hey, you finally harassing a white person, man. Good job, man. It's unclear if he's responsible for the other attacks. The a string of women said this happened to them in recent weeks. This Who, whoever in the chat said we was living in a movie, you would be absolutely correct. First of all, they said it was Brother Sabuki, who happens to be what one one of the great grandchildren of Marcus Garvey, going around punching random white women in the face in New York. Come on, little Lucy, this sounds like a movie script. Come on, like. Haven't we seen this episode before? Man, you better get on out of here. <laughs> what our brother Ayo said, you better come up on out of here, little Lucy. Yeah, with your little movie script. Yeah, he just happens to be the whatever, great grandson of Marcus Garvey, brother Sabuki, going around and punching random white women in the face in New York. Come on. They trying to race bait us, family. That's what they doing. That's what they really want to do. For those of us that are followers of Christ, we know that Satan loves to use racism as a weapon. It's one of his greatest weapons. That's why we got to unify. It's one of his greatest weapons is to use racism and bigotry and bias and division. But you all, we have the power to overcome all that. And we just come together in love. So don't let them win because that's all they're trying to do is bring contingent. We got we to gotta rise above, okay? We got to rise above. Amen. What's the name? Skabuki. I know. Sister, Sister Ruiz says Skab Skabuki. Brother Skabuki. Skabuki. Boo. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, these news headlines are so funny sometimes when I be gathering and doing information, I just be like, okay, yeah. Um, another follow-up for those that might have been absent last week because I actually had to delete that actual news segment that I did 
because uh, it was a few errors in there. Thank you, Big Bear, for uh, correcting me on you. Huh, Sister Chay, that was the wrong location. <laughs> What's up, Big Bear? Big Bear was like, Ocean, Ocean Drive, Ocean Play. I think that's California, not Florida. It was a couple of errors in that. So, yes, I deleted it. So, but for those of you that missed last week's McKessel Deck News, I believe that was on Friday, you missed the FedEx driver crashing into this house. And um, the reason why I want to show this again, because we keep having these like every other week with these FedEx drivers. All right, let's get back to that wild video that we showed you just a few minutes ago of a FedEx truck crashing into a home. It happened yesterday afternoon in Homa when the driver veered from the road. People were inside the house. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. The Homa Police Department says the driver, 31-year-old Michael Smith, was impaired when he crashed. Not only did Smith fail a field sobriety test, yeah. police also say they found marijuana and narcotics inside of that truck. Mike McDaniel joining us now live. From <laughs> he was delivering more than packages. <laughs> and on top of that, he was smoking that. Woo <laughs> he was, I mean, that's a movie too that we... Was that not in that movie Friday after next is the delivery guy? Man, I'm telling y'all, we're living. The world is a stage. The world is a stage. Absolutely, family. He over here delivering FedEx packages and all under the influence of that ooh we crashing in folks' houses. I'm just thankful nobody was hurt. This is what these thuggalicious bandits are doing, y'all. So I just wanted to make sure for those of you that missed it, be careful because these FedEx drivers and these UPS drivers. Mm, some of them is driving under the influence right now because there's been a lot of accidents with those. <laughs> Wait a minute, Big Bear. I like that. Big Bear said, that's going to be a buzzkill. <laughs> that's a good one. Thank you, my brother. Brother Daryl said, party truck. <laughs> exactly. Getting high on his own supplies over here delivering packages and crashing in people's houses it's going down in this world right now Did anybody else hear about this something called the rare demon face syndrome uh oh we pay attention pay attention family it's the rare demon face syndrome yes that's what we're seeing right now and i wonder how did this come about i mean is it something in the air is it something that just happened during the plan injection but um they're talking about a new syndrome and we need to hear about it and be aware because I'm sure we're going to see more, especially after that eclipse. Censored, here's the weird stuff I love. Imagine your vision is totally normal. And then one day you see demonic features everywhere on people only, just like this, what you see behind me. Now that's a reality for a man named Victor Shera. He has extremely rare yet terrifying disorder called PMO. And no, it's commonly known as, or now known because people didn't know about it at first. It's called the demon face syndrome. People with the condition see parts of other people's faces distorted in shape, texture, position or color. For Shara, that means grotesque, grimace, elongated eyes, and deeply etched scars, also pointed ears. There are 75 known cases of the disorder. My next guest, well, we talk about it, and he is kind of skeptical, but he says there's some proof. And joining us now here on The Factor Uncensored, we have with us Dr. Nick Hardy. Dr. Nick, you know, I'm always looking for the weird and the different, and I <laughs> think found I it. found it today. And this condition we're talking Oh, my goodness, people. Rare, what is it called? The rare demon face syndrome. I believe that we're going to start seeing a whole bunch of more cases like this, especially probably after this eclipse. Yeah, people seeing people's faces distorted, looking like demons. That's interesting because I've been seeing that. <laughs> and some of you in the chat know exactly what I'm talking about. Hold up. Yeah, they just not saying it. I, I, I've been seeing some things. But anyway, that's what's in the news. They're, they're talking about it. They're talking about it, calling it the rare demon face syndrome. Yeah. What y'all got in the chat about that one? Mmm. Sister Ruette said they better leave them sherms alone. And that's right. And that PCP and that LSD. Yeah. 
Big Bear said they've been drinking too much Mountain Dew. <laughs> Y'all got issues over there in the live chat. Shalom there, brother Frederick. Good to see you on the McKenzie Beck News Hour. <laughs> yeah, we living in the Matrix. Pursue Righteousness said the firewall of their Matrix has been broken. Absolutely. So, y'all, people finna start seeing all kind of craziness. They probably was smoking that ooh wee that that man on the FedEx truck, that driver from the FedEx truck was delivering. Mm -mm -mm. Well, we'll be hearing more about that. Okay, meanwhile, over here in Phoenix, um, the strip the strip club is over there ripping folks off and putting stuff in people's drinks. Yep, up in the VIP. That's why you don't supposed to be in them strip clubs. Here, Nicole, nearly 20 people have filed a class action lawsuit against several companies that own Skin Cabaret and Bones Cabaret in Scottsdale and Dream Palace in Tempe. All three of these are sister clubs. Now, the initial lawsuit was filed in December on behalf of 15 people. Then fast forward two months later in February, a second lawsuit was added when another man came forward. Attorneys claim the companies were behind an organized effort to drug customers, then steal their wallets and cell phones while those alleged victims were passed out. They claim their photos were taken, their signatures forged. All the incidents happened between fall of 2021 and 2023. The victims apparently did not know one another. The law firm representing those strip clubs is denying any wrongdoing, claiming all the services charged were signed for. We have a crew talking with one of those alleged victims. You'll hear from. <laughs> sorry, sir, you was in the VIP and we got your signature. <laughs> Y'all, they cutting up in Babylon, sir. Your signature is right here on this Amex. Okay, <laughs> we got you down for five lap dances. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it was Tina, Shirley, Laquisha. <laughs> they in there talking about. They're pursuing. They're like, no, no, no. I don't know. That wife got that bill. <laughs> Sister Jimmy, y'all know. Wait a minute. That wife seen that bill? Hold up. When was you at Skins Cabaret? This got me an error. I have never, I have never in my life got no lap dances from Sherry. I mean, <laughs> What was her name? What was her name? Lisa. No. Okay, I'm stop. Y'all, just not it be some funny stuff going on in the news, man. That was out of Phoenix. That was out of Phoenix. <laughs> oh my goodness. And they over here trying to sue. Well, you just you shouldn't have been in there. You shouldn't have been in there. Absolutely. In the live chat. Absolutely. Check out this particular case right here, y'all. This was kind of disturbing right here. I don't even know how this happened, but it did. A teen disarms uh, Los Angeles. It says, it was at San Diego Department. San Diego, is that police? Let's check this out. A young girl unarmed a deputy of his gun. Look at this story right here. Only on Fox 11 tonight, heart-wrenching video from Sunday's deadly shooting inside the L.A. County Sheriff's Department station in industry. A teenage girl can be seen wrestling the sheriff's deputy before taking his gun and pulling the trigger on herself. Fox 11's Matthew Cedar breaking this story. New at 10. Matthew. Christine, Alex, this incident happened fast. Only about five seconds or less. Now, I've got to warn you, this video is hard to watch. New shocking video obtained only by Fox 11 of an ambush, struggle, and shooting Sunday inside L.A. County Sheriff's Department station. We're stopping the video here as the 17-year-old girl uses a deputy's gun to fatally shoot herself. A couple seconds, if you will. All the deputy did was open the door to help somebody. And unfortunately, what occurred, occurred. Watch again as a deputy in the city of industry casually walks and opens the front door. The teen grabs the deputy's gun from his holster, struggles through two punches, and pulls the trigger towards her head, all in just three seconds. After it occurred, everybody's like, what the heck happened? They're doing life-saving measures, CPR, etc. Everybody's affected by it. I was shocked. 
to to see a situation like that. You know what? We need to see. We need to have the complete footage of that because that situation right there looked like it happened so fast. But I'm really just not buying that whole story. I mean, I saw part of it, but first of all, why did that deputy hit her in the head? I seen that too. Being all Andre when she came in the door, it was no reason for him to be roughhousing with the young lady. Mm-hmm. But did anybody else catch anything in that clip? Yeah. Mm. That's the good point you made right there. Sister Ruiz said demon speed. That was just, that whole situation happened super fast. But we need to see all the footage. They kill me like, oh, we can't, we can't show you all the footage right now. Why not? It's like, why even show us partial footage? That's what I'm saying. At this point, we seeing so much in the news these days and we can go on the internet and really see all this stuff, you know, on other websites and stuff. So you might as well just be clean and just show us talking about they can't show all the footage. That was super fast. Okay. What you got next? Another Walmart incident. Yes. Last week it was an 18 year old employee of Walmart that was stabbed to death. I think that was in Illinois at a Walmart. We got another Walmart incident, y'all. What's going on at Walmart, huh? What principality and power is controlling Walmart? Tonight, a Walmart employee in Fayetteville is still on the run, accused of shooting two people inside the store, an adult and a nine-year-old girl. The adult did not survive. The girl still in the hospital. Police are on the hunt for the shooter. But tonight, another person is behind bars, arrested in connection with the shooting. Fox 5's Eric Mock is live at that Walmart. Eric, part of the store is still a crime scene. Absolutely. They've still got one of the entrances here cordoned off. Um, you know, nobody can go in on this side of the Walmart. The two victims were actually shot just inside those doors in the vestibule. And police say this is still a very active manhunt and investigation. The Walmart on Pavilion Parkway in Fayetteville was bustling Saturday, despite one of its entrances being blocked by yellow tape. But oh my gosh, yeah. that is so sad. Oh my gosh, yeah. I really hope she's okay. Shoppers I spoke to were shocked to hear a nine-year-old girl got caught in the crossfire when Fayetteville police say 19-year-old Walmart employee Adrian Jelks opened fire on 19-year-old Antavius Holton at around 10 p.m. Friday night. The nine-year-old is expected to be okay. I'm appalled that an innocent child is in a metro Atlanta area hospital with a gunshot wound. But Holton succumbed to his injuries at the hospital. His family has set up this GoFundMe page to raise money for his funeral expenses. So it was a Walmart employee that done it? Mm -hmm. Wow. He's on the run now. Yeah. Wow. And he worked at Walmart? Mm -hmm. That's Other shoppers were shocked to hear a Walmart employee was armed and could even carry out this shooting. Fayetteville police told us Saturday they're putting all their resources and efforts into capturing Jelks. While Jelks is still on the run, officers did make one arrest. They took 19-year-old Sandra Romero Nunez into custody and planned to charge her with being a party to Jelks' alleged crimes. Investigators have not yet confirmed, though, how exactly she was involved. Still more shoppers were shocked that something like this could even happen in Fayetteville. You don't really feel safe anywhere, really. Yeah. Okay, family, I'm back. That's interesting. I got kicked off for about a good minute there. So if you lost me, that's what happened. Yes. Mm-hmm. They probably was upset about the commentary that we were speaking of. Sister Ruette, I think you called them out when you said you said something about demon speed. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, I totally got kicked off the Internet. It just froze there. Let me know if you're hearing me in the live chat, family. Let me know that I'm back with you all and that you got me so we can go to our next headline. Oh, praises to the Most High. He is worthy. No matter what, there is no weapon that is formed against his children that shall prosper. Amen. Let me know if y'all are can hear me in the live chat. Mm -hmm. It's the Dick News Hour. 
Not sure if it kicked you all off. Okay, there you go. I see you there. Thank you, Sister Ruette, for letting me know. It sure kicked me off. And, and, and you know what? It was like for a good minute, y'all. So my apologies, but it wasn't me. Yeah. So yeah, we had that incident at Walmart. Another incident at, look, at Walmart. Walmart, don't get mad at us because it's been all these killings happening in these stores at your particular establishments. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the palatees. Okay. Thank you, Big Bear, for letting me know. All right. Let me go to the next headline, you all. This is something else we did. We got the, the sh this over here, Indianapolis. Shouts out to my sister, um, Lawana, over there in, in the Indianapolis area. I'm sure this was all over the news in Indiana, but um, this was terrible. This happened over the weekend. It is extremely concerning to us that so many of our young people have been victims of gun violence this evening. Once again, we have a situation in which young people are resolving conflict with firearms, and it has to stop. This was 1130 at night. Uh, the evening right before Sunday, uh, Easter. So if you don't know where your 12-year-old is, I think that should be a priority for you. My assumption is, based on what we know right now, is that there was some sort of disturbance that occurred right before this, and someone or, or some persons uh, decided to use a gun to solve that problem, which is never the right answer. Seven children. Where are the parents? It's terrible. Terrible. I wanted to bring this to the attention of my family in the chat and those watching in regards to solar panels. I saw this and this is in the Texas, the state of Texas. I thought this was alarming. I wonder if this is happening to in, in some other states. But I just want y'all to see this real quick about some contamination with the solar panels. Sounds like um, some strategic to me. Well, thousands of solar panels in the Needville area, which is about an hour southwest of Houston, were absolutely destroyed by last week's hail. We we're following that for you as our Gulf Coast Weather Authority. And now residents are concerned about possible chemical contamination. Fox News is now live with more. Yeah, Anthony, now there are several solar farms here in that Needville area spanning more than 10,000 acres. Some are up and running while others are under construction. Now, some residents were concerned before the solar panels even went up. It was a storm we've never seen before. The 4,000 acre solar farm around Nick Kaminsky's Needville area home took a beating. What did you think when you first saw this? I was shocked. You were worried about the environmental impact of this before it was ever here. That is correct. I was worried about it. Nick showed us emails, he said, before the solar farms were built. He asked Fort Bend County Commissioners, the Fort Bend Economic Development Council, and the owner of Fighting Jay's Solar Farm for the environment. Did y'all see that? See, this is why McKessel Deck News is the McKessel Deck News. Because, okay, this is the state of Texas. Those are solar farms, okay, providing energy. And we know that we have all these different weather catastrophes going on that they are manipulating. Did you see how that hail has destroyed those solar panels? I think he said over 4,000. So where are they really supposed to be getting some power from? Like they didn't know that ahead of time. They didn't think about that that was going to happen when they designed and created this solar farm that possible weather conditions could destroy them. Come on, y'all. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. That's what Sister Chaya would like to know. That's just foolishness right there. Total foolishness. I saw that and I just thought it was important that I bring that to you all. Yes. This is the kind of foolishness that's going on out here. Absolutely. Foolishness.
Okay, let's go to the next one. What you got there in the live chat? Everything man-made. Absolutely. Sister Ruiz said, everything man-made is coming down because man is flawed. Yep. Flawed. They, they didn't think of that one or did they? And they just, that was the plan. Hmm. All right. What you got next, Sister Chaya? What you got next? What is this about? There's somebody hidden camera. Let's see. To the I-Team now, a hidden camera Fox 5 I-Team investigation takes the shine off some big promises made to Georgia homeowners about solar power. Talk about frustrating. Some solar customers ended up spending even more for power than they did. More information about solar panels. That was the article about them actually just ripping people off with the solar panels. It's a ripoff, y'all. It's a ripoff. It's a money grab. That's all it's been is a money grab. Yeah, so I just want to do a follow up. It's been a money grab. Yeah, unless you did your own situation. Okay, what we got now? Baltimore City. We know we had the bridge come down. So look what else is going on in Baltimore. They tried it before. They're trying it again. The city approved a plan to address the vacant home crisis by selling some of them for a buck. But as WMER2 News' Elizabeth Worthington explains tonight, not everyone is on board with the program. Buying a house for a buck. Sounds too good to be true. Well, that's because it is. But the reality is you probably need more like 150 to 200,000 to complete a renovation of one of these structures. That's why the city's housing department. Okay, they selling houses for a dollar. She said the renovation, you probably need a good 100,000 to 200,000. And they're going to verify that you even got 90,000, she said, to even do the repairs. How are you really helping people? I just, you know, this this what I'm saying, y'all. It's just it, a lot of things just don't make sense to me. I remember they had this program before in several inner cities that when they started going down, but I, I think it was like when they were starting to do this gentrification in a number of the cities and they were selling these abandoned houses for a dollar. We'll have to see how this plays out because this is Baltimore, the same area that just had the bridge collapse and see what's really going on over there, right? What you got next, Sister Chaya? They call themselves van lifers, people who live in their vehicles on the street. Some residents who live by the beach say they've become a big problem. ABC 10 News anchor Aaron Dickens spoke to residents who want them to go and the van lifers who say they're not leaving. And I've been speaking to a guy who's been traveling across the country in this van, and he's been sleeping here in Ocean Beach for the last week. He says he feels comfortable and sleeps through the night. Well, I fully converted the inside. I did the top. I put a new transmission in it, changed out the brake system. Brandon Andrade is a van lifer. It's fully organized, and this thing is full of stuff underneath it. He repairs professional baseball nets by day, and by night, he sleeps in this parking lot in OB. I do almost $1,000 a day that I work, so I, Good for you. Yeah, I, just, I really just kind of work to make money to where I can travel and experience life, you know, live my best life outside of work. There are many like Andrade living by the beach. Some say too many. Nobody wants to have people sleeping around their homes. We buy into a neighborhood. We uh, expect there to be law enforcement. We expect there to be security. Glenn Volk says when it comes to the vans, it's a free for all. He said. Oh, my goodness. Did anybody get a solution? I'm curious. Anybody out there watching? Anybody um, in the chat? Because the man just said, well, nobody wants people living in their cars and their vans outside of your home. But well, where else are they going to go? I mean, can we have some designated areas? I mean, people can't afford to live. Where do you suppose that they go? These are people that are living out of their cars and their vans. Where else are they to go? We got plenty of empty parking lots. We got plenty of empty land. My question is, anybody got a solution? Anybody? Anybody? That's all I'm saying. Nobody can afford to pay rent and live. Okay, they're living out their car. You think they prefer to live out of their cars or their vans? I'm sure if they could afford a nice little you know, apartments to be able to lay in a queen size bed. That would be the preference, I think, for most of us. 
So it's out of necessity. Where, where, what, what can we do? What you have are the plenty of empty houses too. Yes, we got plenty of empty houses. Baltimore just said they were selling abandoned houses at four dollar. Why don't they do the fixing up? Why don't they use tax dollars and fix up the housing, fix up the houses and, and provide some housing for the the homelessness? There's a good solution. Uh, Sister Ruiz said yes. Stop funding wars. Good answer. Stop funding wars. Love that answer. What you got next, Sister Chaya? It's just make it make sense to me. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Got money for wars, but can't feed and house the poor. Yeah. Time for new rulership. Next. This was interesting. Nine years old, people. Remember this. A nine-year-old boy. What did he do? Just shock. Just I, just I, several other officers showed up as well, and it was kind of like one of those no one really believed it kind of thing. So several other officers did show up to the scene just to see, it, in fact, that it was a nine-year-old driving the vehicle. Officer Dunn noticed the car stopped in the middle of the intersection of Fourth and Grand, which is the furthest intersection away from me. He then announced over the PA system for the car to move, to which the boy turned onto Fourth Street making his way through this intersection and then through the parking lot of the Valero gas station that I'm standing at. Now, after navigating through the gas station, he made his way through to the to the dirt lot over there where he then backed into Officer Dunn's patrol car. Um, a few seconds later, I did notice a, a little head bopping inside. Um, unusual. Uh, I exited my patrol vehicle, made an approach, and as I was approaching, uh, I could see a kid, which turned out to be a nine-year-old uh, child sticking his head out saying, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get to school. The boy's school was right next door. At that point, we're kind of identify who he was. If that was the school he was actually heading to, uh, we contacted Did y'all just see that? A nine-year-old child was trying to drive himself to school. Oh, my goodness. Nine years old. He was like, I'm trying to drive myself to school. I'm sorry, officer. Oh, my goodness. I'm telling y'all, look, these are the things that are going on in this world. The world is a stage. That's all I got to say. What you got next? A terrifying video circulating on social media appears to show a man carrying a severed body part of someone killed by a train in Wasco. Sheriff's officials say this happened today near the Wasco Amtrak station on G Street. Eyewitness News reporter Lena Folk has that story, but first, we do want to warn you that some of the footage is disturbing. I'm not sure from where, but he came this way, and he walked all through here, and he was waving a like a person's leg, and well, he was he started chewing on it over there. He was biting it, and then he was hitting it against the wall and everything. And it was a typical Friday for the construction workers laying down concrete outside the Amtrak station in Wasco until they saw a horrifying sight. He's eating it. Hey, he you are looking at what a witness says is a man eating a detached leg. The detached leg came from a person hit by a train near the Wasco Amtrak station earlier that morning. Well, on the leg, the skin was hanging. You can see the bone. Jose Ibarra tells Eyewitness News that when the man walked past him with the leg, he believed him to be homeless. Ibarra is unsure where the man came from. He says Kern County Sheriff's deputies stopped the man after people from the Amtrak station called the police. <laughs> More videos sent into Eyewitness News shows the man waving the leg around. KCSO says the man is 27-year-old Rosendo Tellez. Tellez was arrested for taking evidence from the scene and had multiple outstanding warrants. At this moment, invest. Did y'all see that? This man just walking down the street. First of all, it was an accident. I did that whole scene. That whole thing just blew my mind. The whole situation. I died on the, the railroad tracks and got hit by a train. Their leg was severed. And then uh, some homeless man or whoever it was passed by her on some kind of influence. We know what influence he was on. And he just grabbed the leg that was severed and was walking down the street and was eating the leg. 
I'm telling y'all, this we finna see more. What did we just this, this what was the case they just saw? We just said they said we're gonna see more of what was it? What was in the news headline? Rare demon face syndrome. I think we're about to see some stuff. Mm -hmm. Tales of the crib. Tales of the crib. We're, we're about to see some crazy things. The man was walking down the street. Yes. Walking down the street, munching on a human leg. It's getting crazy out here. Cray cray. That's all I got to say. Is it cray cray out here, y'all? What we got next? What we got next? In the McKissel Deck News Hour. A little over an hour. My apologies, family. <laughs> In surveillance video sent to us by a neighbor at 2.07 p.m. Saturday afternoon, you see two small boys on bikes talking with someone. Neighbors tell us it's the homeowner and she has a complicated relationship with those who live near her. Lately, it's been getting worse. As she, I guess as her mental illness gets worse, her brain gets worse. So she starts doing crazier things. Just this morning, she was um, stealing things from her yard guy's truck and was vandalizing their vehicle. That complicated relationship exploded today. In that home video, we see the two boys leaving after a neighbor shoes them away. But just 10 minutes later, they're back. The younger one wearing oversized blue gloves, the older boy black gloves. The older boy can be seen pulling something out of his pants, charging the woman inside her garage and fleeing heartbeats later as she falls to the ground. They leap back on their bikes and roll away. Never did we, any of us, ever think that it was going to be kids from the neighborhood that come and attack her. Neighbors say because of the woman's fragile mental state, her family checks on her regularly. Law enforcement say shortly after. Do y'all see that? Two children. Children. Stabbed a woman. This is a principality that's in the earth. We've been seeing several incidents with children acting out. Not ch spirits. Children. Children. It's a lot going on, family. Let's go over to Long Island. It's been nearly three years since a Long Island woman was attacked with acid in front of her home. And that woman spoke today as the search continues for her attacker. News for Gabby Acevedo, live in Elmont. Gabby. David, Nafia Ikram, filled with courage and emotion, spoke to us, standing next to her parents, demanding justice and asking for people not to forget that the person who hurt Nafia is still out there. 24-year-old Nafia Ikram is relentless. You have to show up for yourself, even on the bad days, because that's when it really counts. Standing tall with scars on her It's been more incidents of people getting attacked with acid and chemicals. That's the reason why I wanted to bring that out, because I know even over here in the Hawaiian Islands, it was several incidents of people being attacked with chemicals, acid. We must be vigilant, family. We must be vigilant. And anybody, you know, when you're by yourself, take some precautions and have you some, some, um, some pepper spray, especially ladies young women, ladies, but everybody really has some protection to protect yourself out here because it's just so much going on that you just never know. All right, this is the last McKesselbeck News headline of the day. I apologize, family, for going a little over there. So much in the news. So much going on in the news. But this last case is really an uh, interesting one as well. What you guys was to try on this last one? Chicago veterinarian. I, I didn't. This one was weird too, y'all. It's th this is what's going on. A lot of crazy things that our minds can't even phantom is going on, phantom in this world right now. Things that are beyond understanding, especially when it comes to darkness. Look at this last um, headline on the McKessel Deck News of the day. Disturbing allegations today have surfaced against a Chicago veterinarian. Adam Stapper King has been arrested on child pornography charges. He's an animal eye specialist at MedVet. And newly obtained court documents outline those shocking details. Casey Cronus is live in the city's Avondale neighborhood with the latest. Casey. 
Sylvia and Terrence, first, we need to warn viewers that they may find these details disturbing. The charges against King follow a months long FBI investigation where undercover agents were messaging with him and he shared that he plans to sexually assault his unborn child. King is an ophthalmologist here at MedVet who's been part of the Chicago team since 2019. He is also a dog breeder and up until today, an American Kennel Club dog show judge. We've learned the FBI has been investigating King since last fall. Through an encrypted social media platform called Telegram, prosecutors say King admitted to assaulting young children, keeping a large digital cache of child pornography, and detailing his plans to sexually assault his unborn child, whom he and his husband are having via surrogate. On March 5th, the FBI raided King's Elburn home. Last Thursday, federal charges were filed. And Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear the details of that? A local vet, okay, already been found in possession of child pornography. And then he has a, a male partner that he's with. And they are having a child, obviously through surrogate. And they found information that this demon is planning on abusing the baby once it gets here. Sick, right? Sick. Satanic. Unimaginable. It made me think about a few other cases I know of people, you know, that have got together and got, you know, some therocant, surrogate to have a baby for them. Is the purpose of them having these babies is so that they can show love to the child or something more sinister like this couple planning to abuse an innocent baby, producing babies to be used for sinister reasons. This world is gone. And if you are out there watching this and you don't think that you need to be under the protection of the Most High with all of the headlines that are being reported, all these dark things happening in the news, and you don't think it's time to give your life to God right now, it's time. It's time to turn away from all sin and get under the protection of the most high. Get on the spiritual art because there's so much going on, right? To all my sisters and brothers in the live chat. That's a sinister one. Wickedness. Brother Darrell, that's the proper word. Wickedness. That's what's going on in this world. So much. It is time. It is time to get your life, get your life right. Get your house in order. Amen. Thank you to all those in the live chat for joining these McKesseldeck News Hour. The McKesseldeck News Hour, should I say? Hour and 13 minutes for this Monday, April 1st. It's the McKesseldeck News Hour. <laughs> I love you all, family. Thank you to all those in the live chat, those that are watching currently and those that may watch later. I appreciate you always showing up for the McKessel Deck News. I love you with real love, real respect, and I'll see you very soon with an update. Amen. All praises to the Most High. All praises. Shalom. Yes. Shalom, family. I'll see you soon. Real love, real respect. Thanks for watching. I love you all. It's the McKissel Deck News Hour. <laughs>